Guten Morgen, Buchle fans. And I'm bisschen Deutsch sprechen for Bruder Batches from the Muffwiggler Forum. How you doing? He is having a bit of an issue with getting MIDI to work correctly on his 281E. And we're going to unravel those mysteries as quickly as we can. One thing you have to do is have the 281E in your system that you wish, wish to have respond to MIDI set to IDA on the back with the little dip switches. So you must have IDA and that means listen to MIDI. I have two 281Es in my system. This one on the left is set to D and this guy is set to A. How do you check? Well, it's just like looking at the firmware. It's different than most other Buchla modules in that you don't use remote enable. You use the quadrature buttons to check each processor because there's a processor for each or every two generators. So jumping down to our preset management window, pushing quadrature CD, we get A2. Pushing quadrature one, or A A B rather, A1. So we know the ID is set to A on the back, which makes it A1, A2, and now it's listening to MIDI. As you can see with no input, we have flashing activity. 225E is flashing. And I'll show you how we have this set up. And then we'll run in through the uh, input settings. So first the MIDI setup. Okay, again, apologies for the handheld camera. I'm just doing this as quickly as possible. You will see that internal bus A, orange LED lit, is set to channel five. That's MIDI channel five. Internal bus B is set to channel one, and that'll be important later. This guy is set to nothing, so it's not looking at anything. This guy is set to channel five as well, MIDI channel five, so it is also flashing. And then I just happen to have these external ones set, so I was doing some calibration stuff. So we have four channels set to channel five. MIDI bus B set to MIDI channel one, that is correct. So we have a sequence being sent on MIDI channel five, obviously. We're looking at one here, but here it is five, LED is lighting. And lo and behold, our 281E that is set to IDA is flashing on internal bus A. Internal bus D is also set to channel five and Lo and behold, even though I left it in quadrature, it is firing away, so that's great. So why have I set two MIDI channels, channel 5 and channel A? Well here I am using my very customized Analog Solutions Europa Sequencer. On pattern C1, we are using MIDI channel da -da -da, 5. On pattern C10, we are using MIDI channel one. So there it is, obviously, what's gonna happen on the boot as I switch between uh, pattern one and pattern 10, basically. Let's fire off, what did I leave it on? Pattern 10, and you will see that we have the pattern running. And that, that brings us to channel one on internal bus B firing away, and immediately going right there as we would expect. I have it in sustain mode, so sustain is being observed. If you take off the LED, it's only looking at the MIDI bus. So this way you could leave something like a trigger, a pulse, still connected, and it's not gonna do anything. I will stop the sequence. It is no longer firing. I bet you can see, pendulum ratchet is firing. Let's remove some of that filtering there. So each of those yellow banana pulses should be firing, which it does not. If I jump over here, obviously we still have our LFO, triangle, AD, whatever. Now it's firing, as it should. If I run MIDI, they're both going to actually fire, which is cool for using something like this as a burst generator on top of your MIDI pulses. And then sustain is just running off of this. Um, and again, if we ran MIDI, you would have both firing at the same time. I'm gonna slow this down a little bit. Do that, and then we will fire off MIDI at the same time. Now we have MIDI going and the pendulum ratchet. Both MIDI pulses and true voltage pulses are being observed and used. We will stop the pendulum ratchet. That's MIDI only. And then you could just say MIDI only with no observation of pendulum ratchet possible, regardless. So. That's how that would 
be done. Bring me in Pendulum Ratchet, Pure Madness. And we have our sequence still running on channel one, as you can see, on preset 10. And I'm just gonna push this and it's gonna jump over to playing on channel five. And if I do that, you'll see it here. It's now running different sequence. But let's make it more interesting for us Buchla folk by moving the camera over to the MIDI bus. So there it is, channel one firing away. I'm gonna switch the pattern to pattern one, which would be MIDI channel five, boom. There it goes. And you'll notice compliance with the 281E. Switch back to MIDI channel one. Where's my finger? There it is. And channel five. Sorry for the shaky cam, still doing with the, this with a broken wrist. That's it. So really, summary, IDA, set the input triggers however you wish them to function. If you want sustain observe, do that. It does observe velocity, so you don't have to patch anything if you have velocity going on from uh, your MIDI sequencer. And you're off to the races as long as you understand that on a 225M, you don't have the flexibility to do this. It's just literally one, two, three, four, or dumped one, two, three, four right onto the 281E. Hope that helps. Okay, and for the 225M, I've basically set up this little pattern or sequence in the Europa. Uh, again, the 225M is just default putting channels, MIDI channels one onto uh, bus one, two onto two, three onto three, and four onto four. No choices there, at least at the moment, knowing Buchla forever. So I've set up uh, pattern one to be channel one, pattern two to be channel two, three and four. And we're just gonna switch between them and look at it on the 281E. But first I'll show you how, how I have it on the 225E. Of course you don't have this choice, but I just set it up as if it were a 225M, which is basically Channel one or bus A is default MIDI channel one, bus B, MIDI channel two, bus C, MIDI channel three, bus D, channel four. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and we should have action on the two, eight, one, E. And I've set them up a little bit differently. So this guy isn't sustain and so is this. So MIDI channel one and two will have sustain mode activated, observing sustain and uh, ties from the sequencer. This guy is only set to attack decay with no sustain observed from the sequencer on channel three. I'm going to have the pendulum ratchet firing at the same time. So as you can see, it's observing the pulse. And again, if I turn that off, it does not observe pulse on the front, but still observes MIDI. So we will have that like this. And this guy pulse off, just observing MIDI on channel four. And let's fire her off. Get all the LEDs and screen. And channel one and your 225M should show you that activity, that blue activity up there. You'll note sustain is observed. MIDI channel two. The second attack decay generator, our function generator is doing its stuff. Channel three. There it goes. These are different sequences. I didn't even program sequences in. I'm just hitting random whatever. So uh, now we will fire the pendulum ratchet and you'll see you're gonna have an overlay of pendulum ratchet and MIDI. MIDI only. And now we will do MIDI channel four. Et voila.